Hey, how's everybody going? How's everyone going? How's everybody doing? I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. I uh, just want to go over this with you here, cost of waiting versus the cost of purchasing. A lot of times people want to wait, especially right now, they kind of want, want to wait to purchase uh, right now because where the rates are and everything else. And if you've been watching my news feed and, and watching the videos that we've been putting out, all indicators point to rates coming down. That's just a natural history of once the recession is officially called, which I think we're in one right now, but it's going to be officially called in 2023. So people are still waiting on the fence. Hey, should I purchase right now? Should I not purchase right now? What should I do? Um, you know, what's the next step? Should I, you know, should I wait six months when the rates do come down? Well, there, there's many different strategies. I've talked about the two one buy down. That's a great strategy. Well, along with that, let me give you some facts and numbers because I'm sure there's a lot of people say buy now, buy now, and you know it's a good time. But let's look at numbers and let's look at the cost of waiting. A lot of times people get you know, really concerned about. Uh, the, you know, the, the cost of purchasing, obviously, right? Down payment, you know, payments per month, everything else. But what is the cost of waiting? Okay, so let me show you. I'm going to flick this around and show you on my screen here, okay? And I'm going to use an example of Flagler County in, in Florida. That, that's where our, our office is down there, as well as Tennessee and then, you know, you know, other states that we're licensed in. But I just want you to see numbers, okay? And I could run this for any county. Uh, just give me a sales price, run these numbers. It literally takes me less than 60 seconds and I get this out to you. So if you're a buyer, Definitely want this information in your hand. If you're a real estate agent, you definitely want this information in your hand. Uh, so you have the numbers and something that just pulls directly from the county. Uh, and it's a service that we provide, okay? So let's look at the cost of waiting, okay? So let's turn this thing around. Okay, so you should be able to see my screen here, okay? Now, I did a loan with 20% down and I believe it was $450,000. A sales price loan amount of 360 as you see there okay so if you wait six months here okay if we come down here okay that's gonna cost you an, an extra 5300 okay so uh, and then if you wait one year it's gonna cost you an extra 19,000 if you wait two years it's gonna cost you 45,000 if you wait three years, it's going to cost you seventy-three thousand. This takes into account appreciation and everything else that goes into it. Okay, payments towards the amortization, uh, amortization lost, uh, all that stuff. Well, you know, property appreciation. We, you know, we use very, very conservative numbers. I mean, and we can adjust that downwards. Just play it extra conservative. But as you can see, so here's the thing: if you're looking to purchase, okay, and you look into, let's say, you go into a conventional loan or even FHA loan, look for the two-one buy-down, right? This is a strategy I talked about before in a different video. So if the rates are, let's just say, six and a half, just to use a number, okay, six and a half interest rate. Well, the two-one buy-down uh, basically would be, um, you know, your first year would be four point five percent, okay. So as the rates come down, all indicators point to around 5% rates are going to be. So even if the rates only come down to, let's say, five and a quarter, refinance at that time, okay? Because you know in the second year of the 2-1 buy-down, it's going to be five and a half. So refinance and anything left over that has been used in a temporary buy-down because you have to get 2.5% of the loan amount can be applied, has to be applied to the principal. So as you can see, if you wait, you're going to be losing money, okay? Six months. Uh, you're gonna, like I said, you're gonna lose over five thousand. If you wait a year, you're gonna be losing over nineteen thousand. Okay, um, so it's it's something where, you know, I'll give you some some more charts and graphs so you can see it a lot more clearly here. So you can see the appreciation loss, and this one is thirty six thousand. This one here is fifteen thousand. Amortization loss and everything else. Okay, because it's not a lot of people think about. It's just about the payments. It's just about the payments. Uh, and 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 so forth, and it's not just about the payments. When you compare rent, uh, you know, compare rent to purchasing, there's so much more that goes into when you buy a house. Okay, appreciation, amortization, uh, and so forth. So, uh, and there's more to it than that. But I just wanted to show you this quick analysis here of cost of waiting. It is more expensive to wait than to purchase right now. Uh, so, so just be aware of that. And then plus, well, we haven't even talked about the factor of, let's say you decided to rent right now uh, and, you know, what those are going up. I and mean, rents are going up, you know, in some places, 10, 15, 18% some places. So, um, you know, th that will be on a separate video. I'm going to show you buy versus rent. Uh, but it's very, very important to understand that uh, and understand the consequences of sitting around. Even if you own a house now and your rates are, hey, Greg, my rates are, you know, 2.875. I get it. It's tough to really, you know, move off of that. 
But at the same time, it's really not because when you look at the bigger picture and you look at the type of house that you want and then also look at, hey, all right, I'll pay a higher, you know, higher interest rate right now. Uh, but, but at the same time, I can get the house that I want and so forth. And when rates start coming back down again, I have an opportunity to refinance. Don't be so sold, sold on, you know, on the, on the rate where you're at right now. If you're looking to expand your house, buy a different house or, you know, you know, try to get into that neighborhood for schools and, and so forth. So there's so much that goes into it, but the cost of waiting is always, always more expensive than the cost of purchasing. And most people don't even think about that. That's why we have this system with the numbers where we can run it for you literally less than 60 seconds. How about? So hopefully that helps out. Let me know if you get any questions on that and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.